Hello everyone, Ruhi here, Slap City, known as the last free place in the world, located in the middle of a desert in California, has no loves, no electricity, no running water or even street names. Despite being situated in one of the wealthiest states in the USA, Slap City is associated with poverty and suffering. When the government abandoned and closed this area, which it used as a military base in World War II, only scraps and concrete slabs remained, and the area became Slap City and attracted homeless or adventurers from various parts of the country. Chaos and trouble always exist in this place where there is no trace of the state. The population of the area is significantly affected by this season. In winter, the city's population reaches its peak of 2000 thanks to the arrival of snowbirds. During this scorching summer, temperatures can exceed 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit, making it unbearable for many. As a result, the population drops to 150. Hello. Where are you? I don't see you. You don't see me? Well, let me return back if I can see you. Yeah, I, I see you at the end of the road. Hello! My name is Rohi. Rohi? Yeah. I'm Zachary. I've been in like a, a, a horrible position in my life right now. Uh, somebody stole my cat. I've been oh. in like severe depression for like two weeks. You were using this before they burnt it, right? Yeah, it was a motorhome. It was fresh and clean. I mean, it was nice. I just bought that truck about four months ago. This They've stuff. already broken my tail lights. They've already been flattened some tires. Really? And, yeah, and, and burnt two of my seats with a goddamn lighter for some reason. These people are sick in the head. Yeah. I don't like them. I, I really just like really don't like these people at all. In this place, people simply disregard others' property or well-being. Zachary's RV had burned, his new truck that he was living in was damaged, and his beloved cat was stolen without any reason. Why did you come here? Why did you choose to be here? Because I can't go anywhere else and just like grab my piece of land. I've been homeless for 20 years. Slab City provides for me to have some stability. That's kind of where I stopped being homeless. This um, is your spot for five years, right? Yeah, I, I built this, all this, I, I ripped these out of the ground. Do you have real friends here? No. And I mean, these people have just been horrible to me. And they've been spreading rumors about me. When do you usually get up and what, uh, sleep? Not anymore, I just, whenever. And whenever. Without legal regulation here, homeless and unemployed individuals find opportunities to construct their own houses. People access clean water through plastic tanks, and those fortunate enough to afford it generate electricity using solar panels. However, there is no sewage system in the place and garbage is not collected. There are no public services, including a police department. Even the United States Postal Service, which typically serves every street in the country, does not enter this area. These factors prove that the city is operating outside of the established system. How do you... Uh, well, they took all my tools though, they yeah. took all my shit. How, how do you provide yourself an income? Like, what do you do? I don't, man. Yeah. So, uh, how can you... I thought about, I thought about selling my awesome salts. Yeah. You know? Scraping off my body slather in the summertime, collecting all my sweat, yeah. and then if I simmer it down, It'll leave the testosterone and salt. Due to lack of money and deprivation, some people commit theft or find themselves desperate. Zachary is just one of the half a million people in the USA who live their lives in a tent, a van, or on a cardboard. Uh, Zachary is showing signs of hesitation and paranoia every now and then, and we are taking the road to the center of Slap City with him. Oh yeah, I was taking my truck. truck. I'm gonna try to be happy with my water and my rice. I don't wanna go looking around for beans. Content. I was just fine as I was. You guys are safe with me, I promise. Yeah, no problem, man. Cool. Um, believe I'm Zachary. You guys have checked me out, I'm sure. Oh, shit. I don't know what's going on here. Are you not allowed to go this way? It says go. It says I can go. Yeah. I don't know, man. You're safe with me as far as I know. Yeah. Like, you're like, it's some shit. I don't have a gun on me. David is among the few inhabitants determined to live a better life here despite the dangers of this environment. He has been surviving in the middle of the desert for six years. He has solar panels, an RV, a backyard, a seating area, and a fireplace. However, like the rest of the city's population, David is not a legal site owner, lacks the title deed, and he doesn't pay taxes for residing in this location. The slabs is an evolving 
uh, place. And when I came out here in the 90s, it was like the old time hippies, you know, the peace, love, the flower children, you know, yeah. uh, that's what everybody is so kind to each other. One big thing that's really destroyed the slabs is um, and they call them tweakers because they do enough of it and they go they start going like this you know uh, and another thing that they do is they become schizophrenic you, know, you see people walking around you're talking to themselves and they don't seem to get along with their uh, imaginary friend because they're yelling at them and screaming at them <laughs> oh and there's my rooster oh yeah <laughs> you live here with your wife no, I, I'm all by myself. Wow, these are a lot of work. Like, yeah, yeah, it's and, and the, but it's, so uh, it's under construction yet. Because yeah. right in the corner here, uh, there's going to be a uh, outdoor fireplace. People call tweakers who engage in disruptive behavior such as making disturbing noises, committing theft, and perpetrating acts of violence are the main reason of danger. These actions worsen the dystopian state of society. Land is kind of free here, free to use at least, right? Yeah, because we're squatters. Yeah. So that attracts a lot of people here. And been in Los Angeles? Yeah. You've seen all the people living on the street? Yeah. And so I'm thinking, well, why, why are those people living in Los Angeles like that when they could you know, live out here in Los Angeles uh, if you're living on the street? Tourists are walking by, they're looking down at those people. Yeah. Have you ever felt homeless? And that's a curious question, though. But I, I wonder, do you, so do you feel yourself as being homeless? Oh, no. I don't either. I don't either. We're brought up to be very materialistic in this country. You know, we always want a bigger car or a better car or a bigger or better house. And you, I just come to the point where that stuff doesn't matter because you don't own anything. You only rent it until you're dead. What do you don't like about slacks? So of people that go around during the daytime, I call it shopping. They're looking to see what they can uh, come get during the night. My mantra is I keep to myself and I mind my own business. If you're an older person, what you are is an easy victim. Do you carry gun? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever witnessed to a crime? I witnessed crimes against myself. Well, they threw Molotov cocktails at my house and I'm putting out the fire. Or People that. here out here at Slab City, they say, don't call the cops for anything because it's more likely if you call the cops on, for something, more likely you're going to go to jail than the perpetrator. What? I think that they're lazy. They, they don't want to bother looking for the perpetrator. They're going to arrest somebody. They want to keep these people here. Yeah, they, they, they uh, keep the people of Slab City here, keep the alcoholics out here. Although California state law technically applies to this area, in reality, crimes are routinely covered up and go unpunished and nobody cares. Residents here are used to the troubles and rarely contact the police unless their lives are in life-threatening danger. Everyone must know self-defense to survive. In addition, there are loud and dangerous experiments being conducted by the military at the nearby base and they completely ignore the residents of this area. The military shows no regard for the safety and comfort of the people. How often do they b there? Oh, it was just yesterday the dogs got scared, so uh, you'll hear it today, I'm sure. Sometimes it is so bad, what? you know, everything just shakes it. People don't expect anything from the state and are content with their living situation. They don't want water and electricity to maintain the status quo. They say bring electricity out here and then a, a flood of people come out here because it's easy to live out here. Oh. That would just destroy the slabs. Creepy people walking around can create danger here at any time. David says he tries to park his car close to the wall in a safe and parallel position to prevent any theft of gas from his vehicle. We came to Salvation Mountain at the entrance of Slab City. This mountain was created by Leonard Knight, a homeless thinker who spent 30 years dedicated to its construction. His only aim was to spread the message God is love. He built this fascinating mountain with thousands of buckets of paint and hay collected with donations. In 2002, the United States recognized this artwork as a national treasure. Today, Salvation Mountain is a popular tourist destination. And let's go to Internet Cafe. Now we are in Slab City's Internet Cafe. It used to belong to someone else, but now it is run by Charlie. The labbers can enjoy free coffee, charge their phones, and connect to the internet here. Also, Charlie earns some money here by repairing bicycles. I'm here hiding from the police. No, I'm just kidding. It was against the law to be homeless in Phoenix. You know, they arrested me for it, and then I've heard of this place. I've been here ever since. Who takes care of the internet cafe? But I take care of it. You. you collect oh, yeah. energy from solar panels and give service to people who live here. Well, yeah, I've got solar panels up there. We're here. Personally, I hate it here. I don't want to be there. I can steal from me and shit, man. I get yeah. tired of shit, man. It's set my house on fire. <laughs> But I couldn't own a bike shop out there. I cussed people out too damn much. <laughs> and nobody would come to my bike shop. I'm just a hippie. I'm an addict too. Man. How did you end up here? 
gave up, man. Honestly, I gave up. You gave up from society? I gave up. I, I quit my job. I worked at LAX, man. I quit my job. I let my house go. And yeah. I just walked away. 80-year-old Michael, who has built a lonely life here, is happy to see us. Uh, how many years have you been here? A year. Eight. Eight years? Yeah. Are you staying alone? Yeah. He immediately shows a photo album from Slap City's old days. Although danger and poverty are the most visible part of this place today, people once lived here with great joy. How much did you pay for this vehicle? One hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Try to match up two holes. There you go. <laughs> All right. It won't take much wind to blow that one over. Why don't we go sit on the front porch? Uh. There's a place to sit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go get my jacket, dude. Where's your jacket? I have one for you, if you would. This is a place where they can be free because nobody pays rent and nobody has a landlord. They say that this place is lawless. Will you say that? Uh, some people who are thinking that way will act that way if given an opportunity. So you gotta be careful and don't be naive and don't leave your stuff around. I left that truck <laughs> for one day and uh, lost a radiator. Nice to meet you. Am I seeing things? <laughs> Maybe. I just wondered how many rocks have I collected? His excitement while playing with bobbling balls and sharing his collection of stones shows us how lonely life gets here. Slap City is a wholly unique world. Their understanding of entertainment, art, church, hostel and even library is far beyond what we are used to. This is Slap City's library, open to everyone. It continues its existence by donations. There are also board games here. This place is described as an anarchist library. No membership is required and also there are no due dates. If someone wants to borrow a book, they can just take it away. We are at the center of Slab City's art. This place is called East Jesus. You can see many different artworks here. A lot of tourists visit this place, but they only come here. They don't step in the living spaces of slabbers. They just visit this place and then leave. Mud, recycled and useless materials and burned cars. All these are essential pieces of Slab City's art. Gargoyles, piles of rubble and scary collections are a reflection of the spirit of the city. A giant mammoth made of a bunch of wheels, a scarf airplane and a car covered with doll heads. These are just a few of the attractive artworks in this place. These are cars that they've burned. This was a limousine, right? Yeah, the big one. So where do these people find these cars? Uh, they may or may not have ever been stolen. They burn these cars and make parking around it. Yeah. A big car. They had a drive over with their motorcycle and their flamethrowers. Wanted to show you where they go to a party. This is range people meet up here and make party on every Saturday. So we will attend to this party. Master. This open air stage is where concerts, performances and the annual ball take place. There are no rules, there is no set repertoire at this stage. Everyone is welcome to express themselves freely. People choose this dangerous environment in Slab City where good and evil coexist to sleep on a piece of cardboard on the street of big cities, either mostly because of a lack of money or they have nowhere else to go. The United States is one of the 10 richest nations in the world, but at least 600,000 people have to spend their lives homeless and the numbers are increasing dramatically every year. Extreme individualism pushes people towards isolation and loneliness. Half of the population aged 12 and above use an illegal substance at least once in their lives in this country. A million people have lost their lives from overdose since 2002. Slap City, an alternative city created by those who don't want to pay taxes to live, is one of the places where some realities are best felt. These people who live in the middle of the desert as if they are forgotten no longer believe in the American dream. If the current situation remains unchanged, these campsites are a kind of a prototype of the future remote corners of the American states. I hope this documentary added a value to your worldview perspective. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Ruhi Chenet was here.